Hi everybody, this is Anne. The cylinder and simple bowl shapes are some of the very first things we learn to make on the pottery wheel. As we learn about the characteristics of the clay and practice our wheel skills, I think every new potter ends up with a shelf full of plain pottery forms. Does this ring any bells for you? If so, I bet your next question is, what do I do with them now? In this video, I'm going to show you one way to transform your cups from plain Jane cylinders to Cinderella at the ball eye catchers using simple carved lines. Here's a cup I bet you all have on your shelf. I went ahead and drew up an idea of how I wanted to divide the cup for carving. When the piece dried to leather hard, the first thing I did was create lines for a top border using my needle tool grounded by a paintbrush. I wanted to make even divisions horizontally down the cup. I found the teeth of this grout spreader worked well to make my marks as they're evenly spaced. Once I got all the marks where I wanted them, I again used a needle tool against a paintbrush to steady my hands, then drew the lines parallel around the piece. I used my trimming spinner to divide the rim into eighths using the green marks. I again divided those marks into sixteenths. Using a bamboo stick, I laid it flat to the piece and dragged it vertically up the cup to meet the mark that I made along the rim. I did this all sixteen times around the top section of the cup, and I only marked every other line at the bottom section of the cup for eight vertical lines. I drew the petal shapes diagonally from top to bottom along those eight marked lines. I then drew triangular shapes between each petal shape. To carve the top, I started in one of the square sections just carving random diagonal lines. In the second square, I changed the direction of the lines to mirror the first square for an interesting pattern. I continued this all the way around the cylinder. I quickly realized that if I started my carvings from the center of the square from corner to corner and worked my way outward on both sides of the square, my lines would be more uniform. On the next row, I continued carving the mirrored lines from one square to the next. It's easy to get confused and mess up your lines. Just keep an eye on the lines at the corners to make sure they're going in different directions before you carve. It might be helpful to draw them with a pencil before committing to carving. I continued with the same pattern all the way down the top section. It's so interesting that just by altering directions, you can draw simple straight lines to create such an alluring design. Now I can continue to carve the petals at the bottom of the cup. I already have them drawn in, so I'm pretty confident about carving those. Now I'm doing this on a banding wheel, but you may feel more comfortable carving by holding the piece in your lap. I then carved those triangular shapes. I doubled up the carved lines for each of the shapes. For more interest, I carved vertical lines in all the negative spaces between the petal and triangular shapes. I'm not counting the lines I'm carving. This is all freehanded simple lines to fill the spaces. No one's going to count.
Finally, I carved an outline at the bottom. Here it is, all dried and ready for the bisque fire. I just glazed it with opulence calico by brushing it over the top section. I then glazed the inside and bottom section with a simple white liner glaze for this beautiful finish. It can be intimidating to contemplate drawing and carving on pottery, but as I have shown you, you can still create beautiful, seemingly complex patterns just by using a series of simple lines to have your Cinderella moment. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.